As soon as I find it. Where's the bloody intro music thing gone? Good grief. Have I deleted that? Let me start a new one. There we are. Here we are. Are you ready for this? Heck yeah. Let's do it then. Intro music is on now. <laughs> Hey, are you even listening? The Gridscast. The TF2 podcast. With these jerks. Hello and welcome once again to Gridscast, the Team Fortress 2 podcast. With your host this evening, me. I am, of course, Agro the Pyro, and I'm currently drinking Moot and Mocha 2, the second variant of this, brewed in March 2010. Now, don't be too worried, it's a five-year-old beer, but it's seven years later, so be a little bit worried. Although I have uncorked it, I sniffed the cork, and it tastes like success. Which is quite apt this evening, because we have with us someone else who tastes slight success. If you could lick them, then I'm sure that's exactly what they would taste like. Uh, instead, you've just got to use your imagination, your tongue emation of lickingness, and uh, join with me in licking our guest this evening. Oh! Oh! Welcome to the show! <laughs> Hey, thanks for having me on, Agro. Uh, I'm a bit concerned with all of the talk of licking, I might say. Yes, you're right, but you'll be <laughs> wrong! Hold those concerns deep into your own psyche. Don't let concerns of other people worry you. You're a YouTuber, man! Surely you know by now, concerns are the things other people have. You're an elite, one of the very upper echelon of our society the rules of normality do not do not touch your your fantastic gleaming beard i'm assuming you have a beard at this point just <laughs> if you don't just it's one of those fake like internal beards it's a beard of the mind let's lick your beard of the mind let's not do this i don't know where i'm going with this anyway uh, i should turn the show at least briefly over to you uh and ask you sincerely, what can we expect to find out about in this week's show? Well, today we've got, uh, we got some stuff. We got stuff that we have, things, Team well, Fortress events, that you could clears say. that up entirely. <laughs> Thank you very much, R. <laughs> tremendous, <laughs> tremendous valuable opportunity it is to have someone of such, such dexterous voice uh come in here and tell us what's what no but seriously ah, uh, what's going on in this week's show well we've got a special guest here uh we're going to be talking about the copenhagen games oh, uh, youtuber highlander show match Ooh. that's going on right now uh some news about tf crew and we've yeah. got a player of the week Okay, so a fairly fun-packed show then. Um, ah, oh, I think I think we put people in in a certain amount of awkwardness. Uh, I I know I feel that sense of awkwardness when I come to to consider your own name. Am I saying it right? Is it ah? Uh... <laughs> My name is actually pronounced Air. Like it's really stupid. My name came from Aaron. And I'm really bad at nicknames and things. Right, now I feel like I feel a bit of a dick thing, because I've been taking the piss out of your name this whole but it's actually no, your okay. real name. So now it's now I feel bad. I feel bad. I look no, bad as well, it. so like, it's fine. It looks like it could be pronounced either way, honestly. So, so it, it's, it's literally A-A-R, and and that's enough for, for it's, three people. It's, just, it's, it's not for three... <laughs> People who love three-letter words. You're like Tom. You're a Tom or a Bob of the of the double. You're like an like if you were an aardvark, you'd be like the coolest aardvark ever. I'm an aardvark. 
You're an Airvark. There we go. Well, that's a possibly a better name than you already have. Like, if you need a surname to go with your slightly bizarre first name, it should be Vark or Devark. It'd be like, you know, name your own keyboard. The R Perfect. Devark system. Right, so you're a YouTube type person. That's true. Have you always been a YouTube type person? We by, by the way, we have a lot of YouTube type people come through the show, and there's a very good reason for that. They're generally well known for their capabilities when it comes to the whole talking thing. I say generally, not always the case. <laughs> anyway, no. So, so you're you're YouTube type person. You you do the YouTubes. Yes, that is true. I. I do YouTube things on youtube.com slash... No, okay, I'm done with that joke. Yes, I was going to say. Actually, no, have you got, have you, have you got like, your name on it? Is it done... I'm, I'm going to Google this now. Do I have to, do I have to, like, go to youtube.com forward slash... Ah. Oh. That's forward slash R must. Oh. Oh, oh, I still don't oh, know how I'm going to oh. have that pronunciation. Team Fortress 2 is a beautiful oh. example. Right. Well, it automatically goes on to play in your videos there. Um, so, our master is that because you're a master of the R's? No, it's just because air was too short. Fair enough. I'm, I, I keep on <laughs> getting your name wrong as well. It's, I'm too I'm too pleased with myself for having like that, that joke of it being just like, like the dying sound. Uh, um, so... <laughs> Yeah, no, I apologised for it like six times now, and I still don't feel any more, so I don't think it's really uh, a very good apology. Um, but you've actually had your channel since 2010, I think, or 2011, which is a good number of years. Uh, yeah. has, has your content sort of evolved since then? Because you, you, you've got a fairly good following. You're it's, doing it's evolved well. drastically, I think. Last year, around February, so I guess almost a full year ago is when I actually started figuring things out more and got this following that I have now. So I did did you have any kind of a following before? Did you lose your following? <laughs> did did you feel like I, did you ever feel I like you really, really engaged with your audience? I really didn't have a following before and I wasn't really engaging with my audience at all really. I just said, "Hey, I'm playing this game with my friends. Here's some cool things that happened and there's a video about it." And now you have a much more connected sense of uh, with with the audience that you have. Now you're you're actively engaged with talking. Okay, the reason why I even have you on in the first place is that you were streaming last night, and I thought you were a really good streamer. Um, oh, so like, the, what makes a good streamer into always a, an average streamer into a good streamer? Um, is the ability to literally engage with the audience. So the audience is firing questions at you, talking at you. Um, as our audience always does, and I kind of always ignore them, but uh, that's just because I'm a lousy streamer. Um, but yeah, so like people will be firing off random questions, and you'll pick up on them, and you'll respond to them. And you had two streams: you had the YouTube stream and the Twitch stream going simultaneously, um, which was it was just a joy to see you like interacting with both sets of uh, humans. Um, uh, I see when there were humans as opposed to dogs who can type um, and spell probably better than I can but there we go um, and, and and you actively seem to be involved with, with the conversation and it wasn't all about you it was all about sort of what's going on in other people's lives uh, but you always managed to bring it back to, to the, the game you were talking about and like people would start talking about field reviews and, and all the stuff that you've actually the, the stuff that you've transitioned into recently and, and one of the reasons why I think you're celebrating a certain period of success is you started focusing on um, like uh, hard logic of Team Fortress 2 as opposed to being all about your own experience or all about a conversation about you now it's about sort of field of views, about tick rates, about um, interp. Uh, was that a conscious decision? Was it something that you specifically thought, I'm I'm not getting the views I, I need? Or uh, well, I wasn't really concerned with getting a following before. Like I, my main reason for doing YouTube stuff is just out of enjoyment. Like I like doing this stuff, and. I think the whole settings thing came about because I was bored in English class one time and I thought, you know what? Team Fortress's default settings really suck. They do. <laughs> so I should I should probably make a video about that. Like, that'd be interesting. I don't usually do things like that. And the video blew up and I was shocked. 
Yeah, I mean, and I realized, like, wait, I like this stuff. I can do more of it. I mean, you got that close to be, half a million views on that one video, and frankly, it is the one video that is so much more, like so many more views. And then, but then, whenever you go into like things like Interp, then you clearly get a, like a a boost from from things like that. So it's working for you. You're definitely doing it well. Do do you have uh, any? I mean, where do you get your knowledge from? What makes you the expert? When I started playing Team Fortress 2, it was late 2012, I would say, and I got a really, really, really shitty laptop for Christmas. And that spiraled into, okay, this sucks. How can I make my experience better? So I experimented with different settings and configs and things, and I learned how commands worked, and overall I gained a lot of knowledge about it, and I'm trying to learn more every day and spread that information. So it was really out of necessity that you, you had to do those things to, to make it a viable game for you. Yeah. I mean, so what is it that... Um, huh, I mean, what drew you to TF2 in the first place? Because most people, if they find that they can't play a game, go, well, fuck it, I can't play this game. Or, fuck it, here's my... Take my money, I'm going to buy the biggest, meanest graphics card, stroke K, stroke whatever, um, until I can finally play this game. So, uh, what is it about Team Fortress 2 that you specifically wanted to play? Were you playing TF2 before you got your new PC? Before I got that computer, uh, I was introduced to TF2 by a few of my friends through the Meet the Team videos, and I thought, well, this is pretty nifty actually i want to play this type of game and despite me not enjoying first person shooters or games like that ever before it just there was something about it that looked appealing like it's not the same old world war ii yeah. realistic it's like a simulator shit. it's yeah it's it's got its own un unique art style and the game looks fun so like i waited for that and i finally got that chance to play it and oof that doesn't run well but I still really like, you know, this game's whole style. So I want to do everything I can in order to be able to keep playing it. It's such a weird thing as well. Like TF2, because it doesn't seem like, it doesn't seem to age all that much. It seems like a thing that's like, uh, it always looks this way. It has always looked this way. And I think until the end of time will always look this way. Uh, but it but it's still, it, it still chomps through. Like it still has a relatively high requirement in terms of CPU and GPU. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous how Source works. Yeah, I think that's part of like the engine being like kind of ancient as well. Like again, it's, yeah. it's it's like an engine that worked brilliantly at the time and was like groundbreaking at the time, but since then there's there's definitely been improvements uh, and simplifications in in requirements. So, uh, but we like TF2 just hasn't figured out how to move on yet, uh, and it's one of the reasons why Warframe, for example, won. Like the the was it the um, test of time or the, the labor love, of love? I labor believe. of love. That's it. Uh, where TF2 didn't because Warframe has got almost reinvented itself continuously. Uh, yeah, TF2 is is playing to the old playing to the old tune, playing to the old tune. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you you went from from not being able to play to fiddling about with everything and then figuring out how to play. Um, have you have you upgraded since then? I mean, do you? Oh yeah, most definitely. That that old laptop is long out of use. It's what inspired me to start building a computer and learning more about how that stuff kind of worked, so I could get a more optimal experience for both me and my viewers. Uh, and now you have the world's greatest PC, and all of <laughs> the stuff that you give out, all the advice about internet rates and stuff, is all is all unless it's so because you you're already working on fiber. Honestly, I still dip under sixty frames a lot of the time. That's, so that's because you got even all, now everything it's kind of not ultra. optimal. Is that? I mean, is it? Is it like your uh, your coup de gras, uh, your uh, your raison d'être, um, and other French sayings? Um, is it your reason for living? Is to 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 create the best player experience environment for both you and your your fan base i guess so well i i want to put up a video if i know that people will enjoy it and i enjoy it too and there have been quite a number of videos that i just scrapped completely because it wasn't fun to watch 
or like there are frame problems and it wasn't good to look at that sort of stuff do you do you feel like now you own this thing like <laughs> no one else is allowed to do like videos about technical tf2 shit now nah not really i mean people can talk about whatever they want that's for sure but if someone says stuff in the same format that i do then that's when i would be kind of miffed I, and you'll go after them with with hail uh, and brimstone uh, <laughs> and, and burn their houses i suppose you're not a pyro are you you play what do you play demo soldier scout <sighs> i knew there was something wrong with this conversation it was, it was oh going so well and then the whole scout bomb drops in i play soldier a lot too so if that it's redeems too late. me somewhat. it's too late no you already, you already plumbed you can only have one there can be only one and and you chose scout uh, you chose poorly that's all i'm saying so have you modified your hard if you modified like your configuration is is like is there like a special art uh, air almost got it right then uh is there a special air config that people uh yeah there download? is there is so the idea with my config was how can i take this gorgeous looking game and have it keep looking gorgeous while also making the experience more optimal like uh interp settings uh making making sure that the game still runs good while looking the same basically it's a config for people who don't want to have low graphics because there used to be that thing uh back in the day like max's config i can't remember the name of the config now like sam's config there's definitely chris's config that's the one um where a whole bunch of settings were in there in terms of graphics in terms of like uh, connection rates and polling and all that sort of thing um and they had their own little website for it i know on um uh one of the comp sort of websites uh is it faxel fecal 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 brigade i can't remember that seems like that should be wrong um but yeah there was definitely a, a website that had like all of the all the settings on it and that was super cool uh, but they never kept it up to date. Uh, and as the game engine kind of changed slightly, if you were running this super amazing config, which was supposed to give you amazing cool rates, it was actually just damaging your graphics without giving you a, a better experience. Are, are you constantly updating your configs, making sure everything looks super cool for everybody? Like, do you, do you live in fear that they'll actually update TF2? <laughs> Well, sort of. I, I haven't pushed out an update to my config in a while now, but I constantly do test commands and stuff to make sure that, yes, this is still providing a more optimal experience, and no, this isn't harming anything. Like, a while back, my config used to have an interp value that would cause a lot of packet loss on community servers. So I made sure to look at that as soon as I could and fix it. Um, yeah, so like it's, it's like the the secret shame of of anyone who who creates anything for TF2 is that you, you basically you got to stay on it, otherwise yeah. it's instantly out of date. And then you're... And if you put something in your older videos, and that's that's gonna stay there forever. So the video I did about TF2's default settings sucking, I put yeah. in some updated interp stuff, and that was yeah, that's just not. That, yeah, what I, people would want, and I, I, I kind of regret not looking more into it yeah, back then. Yeah, like like I I distinctly remember you doing stuff because you you started talking about um, how the default layout is is weird, um, about uh, like field of view, about uh, there's a lot of stuff in 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 one of your um, I'd say more recent but slightly older videos, which I think of as being like surely this is wrong, surely it's changed since then. Like, how much do you think that um, the the stuff that you've earmarked as being wrong and desperately in need of change actually has come to fruition? How often have you been like right, um, and that it, that it was resolved? Right. So what you're asking me is like, have I said something and is it wrong now? Well, more case that if yeah, if if you said something and then Valve went, oh yes, that's a thing that definitely needs to be changed, and then they changed it. Oh, that's never. I thought the default settings video would reach Valve uh, eventually, but it really hasn't. I, I, but but it should. Like genuinely, I know it. It, it confuses me so much because Counter Strike has like good rates and 
good field of view and stuff like why not tf2 it's such a simple change yeah and it's this sort you of change, change settings so i i think personally i believe that tf2 has got a bit of a problem at the moment in as much as they have a lot of new players and like like um there's there's the thing where people who um love tf2 like the old school who've been playing it for say more than a year they're reluctant to leave because they've got all of the the experience of playing with the people that they've ended up playing with and so they've got that community setting there and feeling and and rtf2 and all those things um and then you've got people who um have uh, you've got a constant rush of people coming in like new people who who have not played any tf2 or any sorry any fps before or any pc gaming before like they'll install steam and then steam will basically tell them they've got to now play tf2 so you've constantly got n- new people coming in and you've got like the old school people coming in or sorry staying in but then uh there's the middle ground people who have played once already but decided to leave um and and that i think those group of people would be best affected that that kind of retention rate would be best affected by having the alterations that you sort of put forward as being like why don't you at least do these kind of changes yeah definitely like with that video i really hoped that valve would see it and say hey uh this should be updated because our player base would increase probably because people won't come to the game and see oh, i'm i'm getting sick yeah. i can't see anything or why did i just get hit by this thing that didn't touch me yeah. or stuff like that it's really infuriating and even with the things were like the, the 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 full size weapons i still think that you I, 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 I kind of reaching out to our chat room here and hoping that they'll correct me it means i have to reach out um but like is it such a, a thing that at the moment the, the the default is to have the mega oversized weapons <sighs> yeah, that's that's still a thing, unfortunately. Because that, I mean, it's great. Well done. You've got a beautiful, like, pink, bear shaped colored, frilly, whatever it is, glowing in the dark weapon. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying the fact that it's right in front of you right now, but I can't see the screen. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. And TF2's got so many custom, not custom, but really heavily stylized weapons now with the australiums and the festives and the skins and people want to see them and so do i but i just don't want it to take up half of my screen either yeah absolutely <laughs> uh, it's, it's just a, a weird frustration that it's still it's I, still there after all this time i have a little theory that valve keeps it like that because look at the pretty weapons and that's why they're not changing the default view model fov but yeah nice voice crack but <laughs> sorry man i swear i'm like 14 are you 14 because no, like, there's no. lots of legal documentation <laughs> I like fill in. Do, I need, do i need to get your parents in the room <laughs> what, what are you doing at the moment are you at university or uh i'm in senior year of high school okay so you must have been one of those kiddies when you started off doing the tf2 thing yeah i was did you use your mic no okay do you, do you use it now i mean do you, presumably if you go into a game now and start talking people would be like oh shit you're yeah. off yeah i went through a period where i would use my mic a lot and now ever since the growth of youtube i've been using it less again do you disguise so it's kind of like a bell curve do you, do you i like- haven't i haven't done any of that disguising stuff yet because i have this weird type of ocd but I think I might have to soon because people are trying to target me. It seems like I was on High Tower today and uh, I was playing Scout. So I don't normally go on High Tower. I was there because I had to because contract. Um, mm. But I was playing Scout because wanted to complete contract as soon as possible, and I started getting heals. Like I don't know if you play Scout ever. Or you do, oh. yeah. Uh, but you never yeah. get heals. You never get heals. Why would it, why would anybody ever bother to heal you unless it was during rollout and and medic just wanted to get like a speed boost? Uh, but I was getting like a medic following me everywhere. I this this is not my expectation and or experience <laughs> normally, uh, yeah. unless the medic was just bored, unless there was nobody else to to heal at the time. Yeah, to people listening, it sounds great to have a personal pocket medic, yeah. but like, no. <laughs> Yeah, because you're trying to be sneaky, or you're trying to you you 
like whenever you're stealing the rest attention, then the rest of your team is not getting their heals. And yeah, the rest exactly. Of the team is a much better. Like everyone, anyone is better than it's better to heal the the bloody uh, spy than it is to heal the scout. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Let's face it, scout is going to run around and nick your med pack anyway. Just it's it's so strange. I I was streaming yesterday, as you know, and I had like two pocket medics at one point. <laughs> and I I wanted to leave the server then yeah. and there because I just wanted to be treated like, you know, some normal casual dude playing on the server too. But you'll never be and a normal casual dude ever again. <laughs> we still lost a round. <laughs> well, obviously, because more than medics the were on centuries. you. Yeah. I was trying to do as best as I could, but I still felt kind of like an asshole having the medic up my ass 24-7. Yeah, that can that can I mean, you would feel like an arsehole would have feel, but it was anyway. Uh, I feel like we've we've strained too far into reality. Uh, we need to desperately escape from that now. Um, so your your YouTube channel is like your thing at the moment. You're you're experimenting with Twitch, but even when you were live streaming yesterday, you were like co-streaming between Twitch and YouTube. Uh, you yeah, talked right. about like growing your channel. Is is that like? Is that important to you? Are you are you doing something in school that requires you to like? Is your expectation that you'll you'll come out of this uh, the next uh, Muselk or or Uncle Dane? <laughs> no, I'm not trying to make it super huge. I just want to make content that'll help people or pe stuff that people will enjoy, and that's really all I want. I mean, it'd be nice to grow more so more people can see the stuff that I have, but. It's not some big expectation to get huge, or not expectation, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. You're hopeful, but meh, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I feel very like, much the same nice. way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would love to be able to like walk down the street and have someone say, "Are you the real aggro?" Because that would <laughs> like weird me out. Are you? Imagine if that was like real though. Like you were just walking along and someone say, "Are you the real R?" Uh, oh my like, gosh, no, I have no, something I'm, I'm to say about that, actually. Really? Oof. Have, you, have you been so, spotted? Last weekend, uh, my little brother was having a birthday party, and one of the kids was over at our house using our family's computer to play Team Fortress. And he was like, check out my weapons and stuff. And I said, oh, that's cool. So I showed him mine, because, you know. Yeah, well, he showed you he, yours. He saw my profile. He was like, so are you an impersonator? <laughs> I was confused. <laughs> It turns out he knew who I was. Wow. <laughs> that that was cool, a though. huge, huge reality check. But, like, the chances of it, it's got to be... Because there aren't... I mean, as much as I want to believe that there are millions of people who play Team Fortress 2, the truth is there's, there's, there is, at the most, hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Uh, although a lot of people have played it, and I've had a lot of conversations where uh, I've just seen one of your Shutterstock images come up in a in a YouTube video I'm watching of yours. <laughs> um, so like there there are definitely occasions where I have interacted with um, uh, yeah people and they've they've like in real life and they've talked about Team Fortress Two and I'm like yeah I happen to like that game a lot. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that that that's super cool, and I'm glad that it's a thing. But yeah, I I don't actually have any expectations that anyone will know who I am, or even for that matter, like who the YouTubers that I watch are, like yeah. Array Seven. I I don't I don't I don't expect that I'll bump into someone in a party and they'll say, oh, you know, did you see that Array Seven video last night? Yeah, I always come in with the ex the expectation that people don't watch Team Fortress on YouTube or they don't know who I am either. Like, I'm just a player who likes playing the game. So I will say, hey, Team Fortress, that's good. You're just a guy doing a thing. Exactly. Nice. <laughs> yeah, my that's very descriptive language. Yeah, no, no, I could see that being true. Um, So, guy doing a thing, are, are you... Uh, do, do you... If you, Would you... If you if you had the chance, would you would you make it... Like, could you make it a full-time thing? Uh, I would want to. Because... version of saying that question, by the way. <laughs> So, anyway, yeah, you you would do. Uh, yeah, I would want to, but YouTube is so unstable and crazy that I I really am not gonna consider doing it at the moment. So even if you well, had, maybe you got sponsored. Maybe you started doing something with like a larger YouTube group. Um, like I don't know, you got like included in TF crew for example if, if 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 uncle dane himself reached out his godly <laughs> hand in your direction uh and said to you uh 
please come and join us. Be be one with us. You you are the future, uh, and we are the past. Um, w- would you would you give up on on your other dreams and hopes to to be closer to Dane? I I know that's an extreme exaggeration, but maybe. Wow, <laughs> that's kind of well, cool. I yeah, I think. I would like to do YouTube full time because that means I'm my own boss. I can make stuff without deadlines. Uh, I can. I have creative freedom. I mean, let's face it. Anyone, then, anyone can lot retire of from their job and just do TF2 full time. It just means they're going to be very poor. That's so. That's like the reality of it is that yeah, it's going to be a long time before it's worthwhile paying yeah. for doing a thing. But it's you. You wouldn't if you, okay. All right, let, let's flip it the other way around. Then let's let's give you the worst case scenario, uh, and and moving away from like uh, keeping YouTube as like a as a source of income as being your primary source of income. Um, would you give up TF two? Would you would you take the moose out route, routes? Would you give up TF two and just play whatever is flavor of the month at the moment? Uh, in order to maintain that level of like fandom, um, or is TF2 your your one true and and primary love? I mean, I'm always going to be making TF2 stuff primarily. I'm not going to leave that ever. TF2 means a lot to me, and it's always something I can go back to because it's really fun, and a lot of people, you know, they play it. Yeah. So despite I can do a one-off video like. I did a Mario Odyssey video recently. Yeah, I saw that. I'm like, oh yeah, my god, I, he's I really doing Mario like, now! He's falling into the pit of I really Mario. like Nintendo Switch stuff, but then that video got like a thousand views. So then I thought, yeah, I, 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 I perfectly expected that. I made that video with the expectation that not that many people were going to see it. But, yeah, I really like TF2, and I don't see that going anywhere anytime soon. That's really cool. I'm very pleased you say that. Okay, well, you're allowed to stay now. Um, you, you've answered correctly. Like a dungeon master. <laughs> um, oh, I solved the riddle. Yes. Um, so you you are staying with us at least until we get a chance to ask you play of the week is, but that's a long way off. We we surreptitiously uh, located the ask about the hat thing to the very end of the show. Uh, <laughs> that way we kind of have you, um, and, and your your opinion becomes significantly more important to the general outcome. Um, that there are other things we need to talk about this week, though. So let us let us focus on that for a moment. Copenhagen Games is probably the most important of all of those things. Um, I are you are you, do you, do you play the Highlanders or the Sixes? Are you are you uh, a person? I I don't play them, but I do watch occasionally, and I keep up with the uh, certain rules and banned weapons and stuff. Because while it is interesting to me, I feel like I'm not good enough. And I I get really anxious really easily. I was gonna say, I mean, you don't have to be good enough. You just have to have like five friends or eight friends. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Like, you yeah. just get a bunch of friends and have fun. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. But I now my issue say... is is that I don't have the people to ha- like form a team with. Yeah, I was so... gonna say you're probably better off like finding two friends because that yeah. way, like, you can you can meet up with somebody who's also got two friends or or two groups of people who also have two friends. Uh, and, and form a team that way you're actually kind of better off like not forming a team with a bunch of friends because it makes it really difficult when all of you guys get really good but then there's that one person who never gets any oh, better yeah. and you have to tell them that you're you're booting them off the team because you value success above yeah, their friendship so yeah just join with a couple of friends and and that way you can both like you can you can bring each other up so you can you can constantly like improve each other, um, uh, and then when you get to a certain level, it's not so much a case that you're booting someone off your team. You're you're leaving their team because you've seen better success, um, or they're leaving your team because they want to have like a, a better role. They don't want to play scout anymore. They want to play a decent class like pyro, um, and and it's not an insult anymore. So th- those are some some sort of like key tips for for making it in the world of competitive Highlander or sixes. Um, but like, have you are you joining in with the rewind gang? Are you are you going down for that? Because that's that's surely in your neck of the woods. 
Man, I I really would like to, but I I don't think I can really do that feasibly right now are because you, are you east or west? Uh, east. Oh well, in that case, you're screwed because because yeah. rewind is west coast, and it's practically a different planet. Uh, by the time you go all the way from the east to the west, you're in like I really six would different like time to. zones. I really would like to attend a land like that, like sometime in the future, definitely. But right now, I just well, actually when thinking about yeah. it. It's probably closer to get from uh from east coast to Copenhagen. Um, which I mean, it's very much closer if you're already Europe, in Europe in the first place. But look, I'm I'm, I'm skirting around the topic. Uh, Copenhagen Games is is an event that has taken place for a number of years. Apparently, it gets bigger and better each year. Uh, and the reason why we know that 2018 is the best that they've ever done is because they finally allowed Team Fortress 2 to be an actual competitive game uh, that that experience that uh, gets to be experienced in. Um, in the uh, in the entire land itself um so copenhagen games 2018 tf2 um we have uh, as in like we as in critscast um have kind of negotiated a deal with stn trading um in order for them to provide um a percentage of the monies that goes into um the prize pool for highlander um and copenhagen games have come up with the rest of the money for highlander and in fact all of the money for sixes so far um so we're working with essentials uh the sixes stream is going to be going out through the essential stream and the highlander stream is going to go through critscast uh but like if if apart from stn trading who are just awesome people and you definitely need to go and check out their website on i think it's stntrading.com or stn dot tf let me get the link for that i think it's stntrading.eu that is correct but also if you go to stn.tf i think it does redirect so there's there's i've saved you some letters on your typing um now your fingers won't hurt as much well exactly now you can use your fingers more on the tf2 it's it's a win-win for everybody practice your strafing I indeed <laughs> It's strafing. Now that you've got like an extra like four digits worth of pressing, um, yeah. So uh, they they have sorted us out. But the the primary uh, like the biggest contributor in terms of money and in terms of space, in terms of uh, fitting us up with um, what we need in order to get going. Actually, Copenhagen Games themselves they've made a massive investment um in order to get us into their land it's weird like uh we've done a lot of stuff in the past with uh insomnia and insomnia are brilliant anyway um but like they they've got such huge halls that us taking up a small corner of it isn't like it's not the end of the world whereas copenhagen games they're like devoting a large portion of their land to make team fortress 2 as good as it possibly can be so we are super psyched to be working with them. Also kind of cool work to be working with Esports United, who are just brilliant. Like the, uh, they're, they're allowing us to, to make use of their mics, of their, um, of their like cameras, uh, their streaming equipments. Like the, the amount of investment they personally have put into this land is extraordinary. Like we're talking about tens, if not hundreds of thousands of, of dollars or euros um, just to make TF2 as good as it could possibly get. Um, and it's also a fairly cheap plan. Like I feel like I'm doing a sales pitch on it at the moment, um, but it, I think part of that is because I'm just so psyched. Like this is, this is, this is LAN. Have you, have you ever been to any LAN ever? No, I haven't. Okay, that's... You, you've just done life wrong then. I, I don't care how successful <laughs> as a YouTuber you are. You've done life wrong. You you need to go to a land somewhere. Even if it's I just, really want to. Even, even like, if it's just this like one sounds two, fantastic. Well, two of your friends in a small room. Um, well, it's the three of you in a small room. Actually, you need probably four people, to be honest, if you're going to do a land that way. But like four of you in a small... It could be a large room. If you want. Four of you in your kitchen uh, or lounge or wherever it is, that is technically a LAN. It's a local area network. It's a bunch of people sat around playing computer games. Um, does DS download play count? Does what? Does DS download play count? Uh, I don't know what that is. What's that? Is that something that... <laughs> is, it, do you, is it food? <laughs> no, it was an old Nintendo DS thing where you played your games wirelessly with people. Like, not over the internet. Well, I remember playing PlayStation portable psp back before there was a number after it um 
and I was playing PSP with three other people. Um, we were playing it, uh, uh, one of the racing games, and we were playing it wirelessly with one another. And technically, it still counts as LAN, even though we were playing it in a church while the groom, <laughs> who was also playing, was getting married. Oh my god, that's awesome. That is, I mean, he won as well. I think we kind of let him win that race, to be honest. <laughs> Because uh, he was technically up on the altar at the moment. Uh, at the time. Yeah, he deserves it. Oh, absolutely. He definitely did. Um, marriage didn't really last that long, but but oh. I think his win did. His success for winning that PSP. That is technically a LAN. That still counts. Obviously, yeah, not we all need cool. to start our own LAN and play Mario Kart DS. Yeah, no, no, that's a possibility. Uh, look, if you want to, if you want to set up your own like uh, East Coast mario kart lan experience then please go right ahead but if you want to experience <laughs> european team fortress 2 at its absolute best uh in and in, in an environment that is so tf2 positive like people are just falling over themselves to make this as best land as they possibly can um even to the point where like i don't know if you um if you know how expensive it is to like ship your pc everywhere uh if you've ever moved house uh it's just a it's just an effort um uh whereas this land they will allow you to rent a pc for like 100 and something it's just under 200 euros i think um for the entire like period that the land is on over easter um so it's like super cheap to do that or you can bring your own like byoc bring your own computer and just set up um if you happen to be local or you don't mind like flying it over I know it's something that we used to do a lot sort of back in the days in the early uh, early Ice Insomnia event where like the Swedish team would just like disassemble their PC, stuff it in their pockets, and then walk through security, um, which apparently was fine back in the day. I'm not sure if it's still fine now, uh, but as long as I think as long as you can prove that it, it makes a PC, then it's not really a huge issue. Um, yeah, so the like people were bringing computers in from all over the place. Uh, yeah, it's perfectly viable to do that, and like the 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 food is relatively cheap, beer is relatively cheap, especially compared to somewhere like Insomnia, which is ridiculously overpriced. Um, you can even sleep on the floor at the convention center itself for like seven euros for the entire thing. So your accommodation for the entire thing is seven euros, and there's showers, there's showers for everyone. So nobody is going to be like, there's no reason to be stinky at LAN. Uh, which is a, a huge thing. That's fantastic. That is genuinely amazing. Like the price of the the ticket for the entire events is um, there's some prices on a link that's going to be in the show notes anyway. But uh, it's uh, I'll put a link to it in chat at the moment. Um, so the uh, the prices are kind of listed there. Uh, yeah, BYOC seventy eight euros. So for just under eighty euros. Um, that gives you you can set up your pc and start playing that actually gives you buy into both of the tournaments so we're running it as a sixes tournament and a highlander tournament um and they're going to be structured in such a way that you can actually take part in both of them like simultaneously without it feeling like you're giving up one in order to attend the other um and, and given that at the moment the, the prize pools are like three thousand euros for each like it makes sense to at least compete in both of them like if you're going with saying you're part of a sixes group, uh, I was talking to Sider earlier, and she's saying that like she's only got five friends, so she does she can do sixes. Well, it, like just grab like another bunch of three people who happen to be going as well, split up another team and, and bring them into yours. Make your Highlander team that way, or the other way around. Conversely, if you're part of a Highlander team normally, um, just tell three of your friends to bugger off because you you want to play in the sixes as well uh, and play and play in both of them. Like, how does it get any better than that? This is genuinely like I have such a huge grin on my face at the moment. Like, this is this is a wonderful thing to be able to be a part of. Uh, super, super happy, psyched to be to be involved in this in any way. And I was just told today that I'm going to have the opportunity to hold a microphone for somebody else. So that's that's <laughs> me done. I've I've like achieved so many of the things on my bucket list are being like ticked off with this land. Are, are you are you jealous? Are you gonna like fly over and join us? <laughs> I am pretty jealous. I wish I could attend. What you need to do is you need to start like doing a fundraiser now. 
because it's not until uh, end of March. Although technically you need to buy your ticket pretty soon. So you need to basically raise the money in a month uh, to get yourself, get your ass over here to uh, to Copenhagen. And it's a beautiful city anyway. I mean, it's a fantastic city. Um, it's right next to a theme park. So it's like a stone's throw from the airport to the, the convention centre. And then when that's finally over, uh, you go, go and hang out in the theme park. On the last day, there's a big kind of like uh, concert thing goes on. Um, so it's kind of mad on like the Saturday evening and then everyone just kind of is a zombie on Sunday morning. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it is just an awesome, awesome experience. Anyway, I have waxed lyrical about the joy of Copenhagen games. Uh, please do come and join us there. Um, and we look forward to seeing you guys there. Right. There is another thing that's happening at the moment. Isn't it like the essential show match that's going on right now? I believe so, yes. So, like, Essentials, who are famed at the moment for doing their coverage of sixes, uh, competitive sixes, have decided to really showcase that sixes experience uh, by doing a Highlander match, um, pulling in a bunch of YouTubers that, that really, uh, I was listening to the cast before this went live, uh, that the, the casters themselves have no knowledge of whatsoever, um, and covering six, sorry, covering Highlander in in their best sixes way they possibly knew. So, uh, I mean, I kind of get it. Like anything, if you if you are starting up a stream and you want to get people to notice your stream, you want to do stuff with us with YouTubers as much as possible and and try and like, like I'm doing now. I want to clean. I think about this. <laughs> uh, just just grabbing hold of like the the coolest uh, person from YouTube, the person with the most followers. Uh, and getting them into your stream so that you can uh, put them on the spot and ask them awkward questions about their mothers. Uh, speaking of which, say hi to your mum for me. Um, and there's, there is uh, an inkling towards that being the way forward. Um, but it's it's just I feel, I mean, it just seems a weird thing to celebrate your YouTube channel that focuses on competitive sixes by having a Highlander show match. Yeah, it is kind of strange. But I do see it being, like, sort of funny. Like, hey, look at this one-off thing that we're doing. Yeah, and in fact, what Essentials have done uh, recently as well is they've grabbed, like, random YouTubers or streamers and given them, like, the keys to the Porsche uh, and had them stream for, like, an hour or two, or w one evening, um, and possibly build up the channel that way. So, like, the, the sort of things that the Essentials are doing are actually kind of clever, like they're doing the whole kind of community outreach, they're, they're effectively uh, selling their brand very well. Um, and it's good to see, it's good to see like um, a an up and coming stream effectively try and take off this way. So hats off to them to a certain degree um, because they're clearly like going out of their way to, to make the channel as successful as possible. Um, and in doing so, I mean, the, the the only hope is or the dream is that, that, that when they start doing things like this, then uh, if you have focused energy, uh, I don't know if you ever like go onto the front page of Twitch uh, or just scroll through like what are the active Twitch games at the moment, you'll find like the stuff that's brand new, like the Fortnite or whatever, um, that has the money, that has the focus, has like 50 million people streaming and next number of thousand people watching. Um, and they're at the top of the list, and you scroll down for a long way. And it's only really when somebody famous is streaming TF2 or one of the big channels is streaming TF2 that you have enough people watching to justify, like, going, oh, okay, I, I heard I used to play that game back in the day. I'll go and see what the excitement is about now. So, yeah, it, it, in a kind of roundabout sort of way, making TF2 a more um, focused and enjoyable experience to watch is cool it's great hats off to them for for doing that kind of thing um i'm just wondering whether they're going to start doing like ulti duo show matches or i don't know um what's that game mode where you you set fire to someone or the pyro one where you're air blasting stuff um i can see that being a competitive uh thing that they'll start doing dodgeball but dodgeball. i'm not sure there you go competitive dodgeball so yeah you that sounds fun first. i'd play that yeah, no, actually, if, if the competitive dodgeball was a thing, I would be very tempted to play it too. Uh, I'm not sure I'd stream it on my channel, um, but but that's entirely up to them. Right, so good luck to them. Uh, I'm looking forward to actually seeing the YouTube video that came out with that, assuming they do, 
uh, maybe with all the best bits uh, strung together. Look, uh, talking of YouTube, we've we've had you on the entire time. Uh, I know I've been bombasting you with uh, with with conversational topics, um, but uh, that there is a group of people, uh, and actually, I mean, it ties in kind of nicely um with with the the previous content about the the highlander uh, youtuber show match um tf crew i am of course talking about uncle dane um and the 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 group of people that he's kind of drawn into himself rather than stopping at his own success or celebrating his own success like some people who have done in the past i almost like insulted someone there it's too easy um <laughs> He's basically kind of like reached out to a bunch of up and coming YouTubers, YouTubers who have had some success, have proved themselves capable and worthy of putting out a lot of content over the years, um, and asked them to be part of his Team Fortress crew. Um, and one of the outcomes of doing this is, uh, well, okay, something that's happened fairly recently is is the TF crew guys have released a new website which is super nice to see. I saw it in uh, development uh, as it was sort of coming up and it was just like genuinely all you want. If you're, if you're trying to do a website thing to promote your thing, like the, the websites I would go and say to look at are hugs.tf. Um, hugs do a really nice website. Like it's actually designed by a bunch of website creators. That is that is what they do for their bread and butter, and they've done such a good job of it. Um, same with the tip of the hats. Like it's just it's kind of like it's a one thing. That's all they have to do. Um, that that's like they're just propelling whatever the message is. Um, and in fact, what TF Crew have done with their website is they've kept it so incredibly simple. Like the entire focus of it is just about the people who contribute to uh, to making TF, making up TF Crew uh, and to keeping like TF Crew running. So at the moment they've got like the three links: the about page, the crew page, and the esports page. Um, uh, for, okay, for for my like market research, if you want to put it that way, had you have heard of, have you heard of TF Crew? Um, and, <coughs> right. Easy question. Sorry. Have you heard of TF Crew? Yes. All right. How have you heard of TF Crew? Well, it started out with uh, Uncle Dane's video he did after Meet Your Match came out. Right. So basically an announcement video on his channel talking about TF Crew. Okay. Yep. That's actually kind of cool. I'm glad that like, I'm glad I don't have to explain to you what TF Crew is. Um, and I don't think I have to explain to a lot of people what TF Crew is. I think Dane has gone... Uh, to a fairly large, like a good um, degree, to to show what uh, what it means, um, what what TF Crew is part of, or who is part of TF Crew. Uh, and I know the crew members themselves have changed like fairly recently. Some people who have left TF2 uh, are no longer considered part of the crew, although they'll they'll always be like spiritually part of the crew. Um, and some people who are relatively new on the scene or achieved that certain like uh, having achieved that level of success or notoriety um like in a positive way uh they, they've made their way onto tf crew and it, it, i suppose it's different from to do um that that's like they're just propelling whatever the message is um and in fact what tf crew have done with their website is they've kept it so incredibly simple like the entire focus of it is just about the people who contribute to uh, to making TF, making up TF Crew uh, and to keeping like TF Crew running. So at the moment they've got like the three links: the about page, the crew page, and the esports page. Um, uh, for, okay, for for my like market research, if you want to put it that way, had you have heard of, have you heard of TF Crew? Um, and, <clears throat> right. Easy question. Sorry. Have you heard of TF Crew? Yes. All right. How have you heard of TF Crew? Well, it started out with uh, Uncle Dane's video he did after Meet Your Match came out. Right. So basically an announcement video on his channel talking about TF Crew. Yep. Okay. That's actually kind of cool. I'm glad that like I'm glad I don't have to explain to you what TF Crew is. Um, and I don't think I have to explain to a lot of people what TF Crew is. I think Dane has gone... Uh, to a fairly large, like a good um, degree, 
to to show what uh, what it means, um, what what TF Crew is part of, or who is part of TF Crew. Uh, and I know the crew members themselves have changed like fairly recently. Some people who have left TF2 uh, are no longer considered part of the crew, although they'll they'll always be like spiritually part of the crew. Um, and some people who are relatively new on the scene or achieved that certain like uh, having achieved that level of success or notoriety um like in a positive way uh they they've made their way onto tf crew and it, it, i suppose it's different from black show which is another of the the tf um like youtube streamy type organizations um i, I just think that the tf guys just tf crew guys just do it just to, like really work it just make it look so simple um at, to a degree that i'm so happy to be part of that crew and super humbled to be part of it as well like i don't i don't know that i deserve it or that critscast deserves it we've just been around for a long time and that's um maybe maybe that's worth something to someone but um anyway so beyond sort of tooting my own horn uh the website has gone up that's cool. I'm glad they've done it. It looks really nice. Um, actually, very jealous looking at it now. I want one. Like, I, I, I want a new website for Chriscast so badly. Yeah, seeing all these websites is insane. Yeah. Like, they look so stylish and professional. Exactly. That's the thing where it's just like there's not even like a ridiculous amount of content there. It's just whatever there is there has been so well done, so well put together. Um, but look, okay, I wanted to really focus on like the esports angle for this. Um, for logic that um, Uncle Dane sort of went into in a small degree, and I'm pretty sure he's spoken about this since, uh, he's decided that one thing that TF Crew can do is to sponsor their own esports team. Uh, actually, the way that it was announced was through a video. Um, it was, uh, I've got a funny feeling that Floor might have had something to do with this, or, um, been cool. So, like, for any introduce, I think all YouTube, no, sorry, all TF2 teams should have one of these, should have, like, an intro movie, uh, that maybe gets played every time anyone's playing, like, uh, certainly if they get to finals or something, this should come up. Yeah, I strongly agree. Like, this is fantastic. Genuinely, brilliantly well. I've never been so enthused. Like, it's not even a frag movie. Like, I don't know whether anybody gets shot or, or anything. It's just like, it's just introducing classes, characters, the, the player names, and saying, like, what the nature of the, 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 the team is, and now you know what the logo looks like. Like, they are going to get so much love and attention and hype, they almost don't need to necessarily succeed in their chosen like uh in their chosen leagues that they just they're always going to be like tf crew's team um this and is super like inspiring too yeah absolutely like um i i want other i want other groups be they youtuber groups or be they like third party like advertisers whomever to sponsor like their own teams and have more teams like this like the price of sponsoring a team in certainly in team fortress 2 is so like, it's so inexpensive. Even an invite level screen, and by invite, you basically get invited to the lands. You get invited to take part in, like, the higher level. So, like, um, the the price of getting into the LAN or getting into, like, the, the league is, is relatively speaking, peanuts. We're talking, like, even for, like, six-man team or a nine-man team, we're still talking tens of dollars maybe hundred or hundreds of dollars at the very most if you're like if you're running an advertising group oh sorry if you if you have an advertising budget uh for whatever company or group you're you're running then chances are that that having your own tf2 esport team is not even going to scratch the surface of that budget uh, even if you have to pay for players to get to LAN, and that LAN is in a different country, like even that isn't going to make a significant dent on on what you can get in terms of goodwill from doing this kind of thing in terms of getting your name out there. So this is kind of a genius move uh, by Dane and by the rest of the guys at TF Crew. Um, like I, you know, talking about sort of being smiley before this, this is genuinely awesome.
would you uh, would you consider sponsoring a group? Would you would you make the uh, the air? Well, presumably, it'd be called the air shots. <laughs> That's really clever, honestly. But that is pretty cool. I just wish I had more resources to do cool things like this. Uh, does it make you want to play competitive though? It it really does. Like just seeing how this leads up with all those clips and the player transitions and yeah, just mm. oh, it's so tasty. Like um, it makes me want to learn how to do you to do video stuff as well. Yeah, me too. Like yeah. it, I almost want to start up SFM and do something like that. Like right now. Like that's <laughs> that's the level of like shock that I felt. Do you do all of your SFM? Because like one of the things that kind of makes your video stand out is like the the, the thumbnails. Do you? Do oh, you the do thumbnails that? are uh, they're done by my friend Sketchy. All right, so shout out to Sketchy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, okay. Uh, so... I think he was in the Twitch chat a while ago. Uh, okay. My apologies for not uh, for not giving a big shout out to Twitchy uh, while he was in. Uh, but but a big shout out to Essentials TF who are raiding us at the moment with 191 people. Thank you very much, Essentials. I assume from that then uh, the the whole YouTuber show match has ended, uh, which is rather unfortunate because we're also coming to the very end of this stream. Uh, before we do that though, there is something super important that we need to do, uh, and that is give our guest of the week uh, air. Oh uh, my goodness me! Um, uh, an, an opportunity to. Oh my goodness, I've just been uh, seen that uh, Will and Sleevelet also hosting us with uh, a rather large number of people. I almost feel like we should do the show again now. Now, now that it's ended, <laughs> now that you're, you're more comfortable in the environment, uh, uh, um, we, 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 can we do the show again from the very beginning? Is, is that okay? No, well, I wouldn't ask you to do that. Um, that. That's too much effort. But what I do need to ask you to do, though, is, is to name Player of the Week. Someone who's had an influence on your experience of Team Fortress 2. Someone who um, has done something crazy or wonderful for you personally uh, that makes you want to be part of the TF2 scene or else someone who is just massively awesome uh, in, in Team Fortress 2. Who who would be and why would they be your Player of the Week? My pick for Player of the Week is Mastercoms. Mastercoms is uh, the person putting up a bunch of configs recently, like the most up-to-date stuff that you can get. It's uh, There's a bunch of different presets, too. Like, you want the absolute maximum performance with, like, lowest graphics. You can do that. Uh, you want your game to still look good, but have optimizations where necessary. Mastercoms' config does that, too. And it just... Mastercoms does extensive research with everything. How am I spelling it, Mastercoms? It's inspiring. M A S T E R C O M S. Cool. Okay, so I'm on his. I'm on the GitHub page for him at the moment. Uh, there's uh, Mastercoms uh, Max Performance, Max Quality, Max Dev. Uh, I also need to give a quick shout out to uh, Doctor Blaze the Loser for for subscribing. Uh, very much welcome to the stream to you. Um, like, why is is his stuff exceptional? Is is it something that's constantly being updated i see on here like the latest commit was like two days ago yeah this stuff is getting constant updates uh every few days mastercoms is a server where uh they talk about commands and stuff and they always help people installing and testing out certain variables and things and it's just it's a really nice thing to see this much dedication and to getting people the best performance possible in Team Fortress. It's kind of like, I always feel like whenever somebody like Six Eve or, or anyone who does something exceptional in the world of like TF2, uh, or even like Floor uh, for his Floor HUD and Vito, like the, I almost feel like these people deserve to have jobs at Valve. Like I, I kind of, like I wish that I was responsible for giving people at least the opportunity to sit down with Valve. Um, because if, if, there were more people like Mastercoms in this particular circumstance um, who had the chance of influencing the way Valve was experienced by more people. Um, I think we'd probably end up with a better game, a, a, certainly a better experience. Okay, I have absolutely no qualms at all. I thought, to be honest, it was going to be your mum or your little brother. 
um, <laughs> who, who became player of the week, and that'd be kind of, kind of a weird and awkward conversation. Uh, where I try and get your mum to put, uh, get her to install Team Fortress Two, and then like have her be happy about the hat that she's now wearing. Um, but no, Master Comms, I have no problem with whatsoever, and I kind of like feel like we've sort of sold sold them short to to just give them a shout out at this stage. If you know Master Comms personally, um, ask them on my behalf if they would like to come on the show and talk a little bit about what they do um, and, and why they go to such great effort, which is extraordinary. I mean, um, I, I, I do feel bad for not knowing about Master Comms before now. Uh, and I'm hoping that somebody listening to this is going to go, I was going to do a thing. Now I don't have to anymore. Master Comms has totally done it. Let me let me get this person into my group uh, and we can make beautiful music together. Anyway, uh, I've said enough. What I need to do is, is press the button that plays the jingle uh, and welcome to to the great big group of wonderful people, otherwise known as Chris Cast's Player of the Week. And my music's not working. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so, Master Comms, congratulations, you are Player of the Week, and, well, I don't know, thank you, and congratulations go out to our, or our, um, for, for joining us for this week's episode of Critscast. Um, you, you were a, a willing, if not eager, guest. <laughs> uh, it has been a joy to have you on. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to give a, a shout out to before we sort of throw you back out into the ether? Uh, not particularly. Uh, I wanted to shout out Mastercoms most of all because of her dedication to the configs and stuff, as previously mentioned. Uh, right. Well, that's fine. You you have no other friends then. <laughs> not nah, well. I guess. Well, not I guess, because these people do mean a lot to me. But, uh, some names I want to throw out. Uh, Cass, Nurin, Max, Kala, and... See here, there's a bunch of people I'm, like, Yeah, no, I can say, if, if you forget anyone now, you're so doomed. They will never yeah. forgive you. You had a chance, and you blew it. <laughs> yeah, there's a JP Zard. Uh, Pink Turtleneck, Pummelator, uh, Braxy, and yeah, <laughs> basically what I can think of right now. All of the awesome people and some of the people who are also awesome you didn't have a chance or at least a brain to remember. Um, they they all, I think they're secretly pleased that, that they got their shout out on Critzcast. Um, personally, it has been a pleasure having you on. Uh, it's, uh, it's certainly been insightful. Uh, and I know that I'll be playing TF2 differently in the future, um, if only slightly better with better interp rates. Uh, thank you very much, um, Sweet Dreams. And to everyone who has just joined us or joined us for the first time, I do hope that you will follow or subscribe or do any of the other things. You can find out more about the inside, inner, and joyous workings of Critzcast by going to our Patreon uh, that is, I've been using it as I say, as a little bit of a kind of a, a personal blog on on the uh, the nature of uh, my interactions with Team Fortress Two. Um, certainly, uh, anything that is going to be awesome that's happening in the future uh, gets told first on Patreon. Um, we're trying to figure out ways of, of making Patreon better for other people, uh, but we've actually, I mean, I said this last time, but we didn't actually do it. Um, we, we've finally reached our $50 um, uh, amounts. I said that we did, we we're going to do something, but actually what happened is we reached the $50 amounts, but then when it came to payday, uh, there were enough people who dropped out. It was just, just before that was that thing, the big scare with Patreon, and enough people dropped out in order to ensure that Actually, we we didn't actually meet our um, our requirements for that uh, fifty dollar thing, so now we're at a stage where we're gonna have to do something awesome. I've lined up a couple of things with ETF two L, so there's secret things on the horizon for that. Uh, but we're definitely gonna be pushing out that money that uh, that's been raised through Patreon back out to the community in as many uh, interesting ways as possible. So if you want to help TF two get better. Uh, be more successful as a game and for people within the community to be recognized um, there are worse ways of going about it than uh, than giving us a couple of bucks on patreon 
All right, guys, thank you very much for watching and listening and enjoying TF2 in this rather roundabout sort of way. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Uh, check out this stream. Um, there is definitely going to be more Highlander action. If you enjoyed watching The Essentials Highlander, you can guarantee uh, of seeing at least once a week, if not more often, uh, extraordinary Highlander skills on display on this Twitch stream and, in fact, on this YouTube as well. Sweet dreams to everyone. I believe I've spoken enough. It's time to say goodbye. 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 Outro music. That was another episode of Critscast. Another satisfied customer. Brought to you by thepodcast.com. Our influence grows. For more episodes as well as our show notes, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Steam Group, and much more, head over to critscast.com. Another successful procedure. That's the longest outro I think I've ever done. <laughs> um, right, so apologies for like using the words quite a lot there. This beer, by the way, ended up being very, very good. And I feel a little bit better.